Hello world, my name is Mike. I'm one of the newest members of the Convex team. One thing I've always found fascinating with Convex is just how fast and how fun it feels to build with Convex. To me, I think one of the big reasons for that is this automated API generation. To show you what I mean by that, let's take a quick look at an example. So this is a standard Convex query. It's a serverless function. Um, it runs on the server. It's called list messages, and it takes a single argument from user ID. How it's implemented doesn't matter right now, um, but what does matter is where this function lives. It's in the convex slash foo directory, and it's in the my queries file. Why that's important is because convex will automat automatically generate a API for us. So on the client side, on in our React component here, we can access that query by using the use query hook and passing it this object here, this API foo my queries list messages and uh, we pass it the argument from user ID. And what makes this special is that if I accidentally misspell something, say messages without two S's, uh, I'll get a type error from TypeScript, or if I misspell the, one of the parameters or miss one of the parameters, it, uh, TypeScript will yell at me. So this makes it really powerful and really quick to develop with because you know that as long as TypeScript's compiling, you're gonna be able to call those queries. So how exactly this is implemented is something that I want to dive into today. So join me, let's go code spelunking through the convex code base and try and work out how this does its thing. Let's go. Okay, so let's start off with what we know. So when we run convex dev in our CLI, what we end up with is this underscore generated directory. And inside there, we get a number of files. Um, the one that I'm most interested in though is this api.d.ts because inside of here is what I think is where some of the magic is happening, is where this API is being generated. Um, so to work out what happens when we type convex dev into our terminal, let's, uh, let's start by taking a look at the npm package for convex. Okay, so from here we can open up the repository and I think a good place to start would be in the, oops, in the package JSON. And because in here, there should be a bin section somewhere. Yeah, here. So this is what node uses um, when you type convex dev. It, it, this is what it uses to, to call, to know what to call. Um, it's this bin slash main dev file. So let's open that up, uh, main dev here. Yeah, so this looks like a bash command that switches depending upon if we're in Mac or Linux or Windows. Um, but ultimately it looks like it's gonna do the same thing. It's gonna call this index.ts file. So um, yeah, let's let's have a look at that next. So let's go into source CLI um, index.ts. So just scrolling down here, aha, here, yep. So we can see this is where the main program is defined. Um, and it's using the excellent commander library. So this is a helper library that's very common for building CLIs um, using um, JavaScript. So we can see we have a number of commands here. Let's just uh, flick back to our editor and just confirm. Uh, let's type convex dash dash help. And we can see, yeah, we have dev, deploy, run, import, dashboard, etc. And if we go back, we should be able to see uh, dev, deploy, uh, import, dashboard, yep. So this is the right place, we're on the right track. So I think the next step is to look at what this dev command is doing. So if we have a look in GitHub's references section here, we can see that it's pointing to our dev.js file. So let's open that up next. So just scrolling down this a little bit, we see uh, this action section, which is the thing that actually handles um, what happens when you call the function, uh, call the command. And scrolling down, um, yep, yeah, we have this promises push watch and push function, which I think looks like it must be doing most of the work. So let's go to that, oh, it's just down here. Uh, and ha, here we see a infinite while loop. So this means uh, we're probably on the right track here um, because when you run convex dev, um, it's uh, basically an infinite loop that waits for changes for files before it generates and uploads them. So 
But yeah, we can see here preparing comics functions. So we're on the right track. Okay, so I think maybe our next step is to explore this run push function a little bit. So let's go to the definition of that. And we are now in the components TS file, which is a bit confusing. Um, maybe this is referring to Convex's new components. Um, let's come back to that one. Um, for now, let's let's go deeper into this run non components section. Let's go to the definition of that. Scrolling down here, we can see this if statement here. Aha, do cogen. This looks promising. Just looking up a little bit though, um, it seems like it's possible to skip cogen. It's interesting. I didn't know you could do that. That's good to know. Not sure why you'd want to do that, but you can. Okay. But let's just continue into this uh, do cogen function. So let's go to the definition of that. Ooh, this is a bigger function. Um, there's a lot of interesting stuff in here. Some interesting comments here. Um, scrolling back up a bit though. But let's have a look, what does, it, what does this say? Write files in dependency order so a watching dev server doesn't see inconsistent results. Eh, interesting. Okay, so I guess this is to do with helping TypeScript, um, preventing it from like churning by writing files in the wrong order, etc. So this is kind of an interesting little thing, but um, that's not what we're interested in. Let's continue down. Looks like this do API cogen is probably what we want next. So let's go into that. Mm, so it looks like most of this function is about writing files to disk, but that's not what I'm interested in. What I'm interested in is working out how it knows which files to include in that API uh, .d.ts and which files not to include in there. So I think where I need to go to next is into this entry point section. So let's go to the definition of that. So as this function name entry point suggests, I think it's to do with finding the entry points into the API. And the first thing I see here is this walk dir, which I assume is a recursive directory walker. So that's obviously important if we have something like this, where we have this foo my queries, we're going to have like these nested directories within each other. So it's going to need to be able to recursively go down through these directories to find out um, which functions and files and stuff to include inside the API. So continue to scroll down a bit in here. We see this non empty entry points. Interesting. So it looks like this part here, is the only part that determines whether it should include that file in the export or not. This is interesting. This is not what I was expecting to see. I was expecting to see some sort of code that would determine whether we're using queries, mutations, actions, and if we are, then that file should be included. Um, I was expecting some sort of abstract syntax, syntax tree parser of some sort. Um, to determine this, but it looks like all it's doing is just working out whether it has an export in it, and then if so, include it. So how how does this work then? How are we able to um, call this API my queries list messages then? How does it know whether to include this function but not some other function in the API or not? I think at this point, it might be wise that I step back and reassess how I thought API generation works. So I think what we need to do is take a look at a more complicated um, generated file. So I've got one here from the AI Town project, and we can see it's a much more complicated API. It's got many, many more files that are included in it. Um, but the interesting part I saw here is that it's included whole bunch of utils that don't even have um, queries, mutations, or actions in them. So for example, like this util assert never, it's just has a single function, but it doesn't, it's not a query mutation or action. So this is different from how I imagined it to work. Like I said, what I imagined it to work was that we would at the uh, code gen level, it would choose uh, whether to include a file in the API if it had a query mutation or action in it but it must be happening at a different level. It must be happening at the TypeScript level it's itself instead. So let's flip back to the code 
and have a look uh, at how this API for modules uh, function works. So inside here, we have a type alias. It references this filter API. So let's open that up. Oh, this looks like a complicated recursive uh, conditional type. Oh. So after consulting with my body chat GPT, um, we have concluded that this uh, crazy recursive uh, type is the magic. This is the thing that filters out any functions from the API that aren't um, convex expected, so aren't convex callable from the client side. So if that is the case then, how um, how does this work then? How is this object not throwing a, a error to us at runtime? How is this like this this object path working? To explain what I mean, let's um, let's open up a JavaScript um, REPL of some sort. So let's go into here and then let's open up the terminal. And if I type in console.log api.foo.my thing we'll get a reference error, API is not defined. That's what we expect. Uh, if we define it, API equals an object, and then we say console.log api.foo.something, we still get an error. And that's, that's what we expect, you know, because we've defined an object, we haven't defined foo or something within it. And this is kind of like what we're seeing here. We've defined an object here, this api.foo, but it hasn't got anything within it. It's just an empty object. So how how are we able to run this at call this at runtime and not get an error? Let's take a little bit closer look in here. So if we open up the api.js file, which is what the the implementation of the definition. We can see we have this any API. This API is actually the any API object. And if we open that up, okay, we have the create API function, which, aha, I knew it. All JavaScript magic ultimately comes down to the proxy object. If you're not familiar with the proxy object, it is a part of the JavaScript specification and it allows you to do all kinds of crazy stuff. It effectively lets you define an object that um, allows you to intercept accesses pro to properties and functions um, and do something else. Uh, so it's it's a really very powerful, um, very powerful uh, API um, that looks like Convex is taking advantage of here. So when we call our api.foo.myqueries list messages, what's actually happening is, let me find it again, create API, is it's creating a proxy object, which when you access the .foo property, it's then creating another proxy object to access the next property, and then the next property, and the next property, and so on and so on. So uh, until we get to our list messages. And at that point, it's then going to return a function reference uh, representing the path that you just traversed to. So it it's gonna return a string which represents that path. This makes sense, right? Because if we were to call the convex uh, run command from the CLI, we have to give it a function name, which is gonna be a string representation of our function reference anyway. So it makes sense that what, um, go away, please. Uh, what, <laughs> it makes sense that this uh, object path is just gonna get translated into a string anyway that the API is gonna to use to call convex with. So yeah, very cool. So there we have it. We have gone spelunking through the convex code base and worked out exactly how this automated API generation works. It wasn't exactly what I expected, but it was cool nonetheless to discover that. So what can we do with this? Um, well, I mean, off the top of my head, there's a few things we, we now know that we could do. We could um, create an extension for convex potentially that allows us to exclude certain folders or files from that um, generation process. Um, we could write a TypeScript plugin, which uh, leverages some of this uh, compiler provided path knowledge about a convex project to do refactors or other things like that. 
Um, we could potentially do some sort of uh, function redirect stuff, but yeah, lots of stuff we could do with this. Um, I think maybe we'll save that for another video. So thanks for watching. See you later.